posh kebabs, mate. You can pack it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, stop that again. So to celebrate 25 years since The Naked Chef, yes, the shirt is back out. Uh, slightly different, you know, but you're still there, still rocking it. Uh, I'm gonna look at some clips from The Naked Chef. Honestly, I haven't seen them for decades. Like, I don't spend time, believe it or not, watching myself on TV. So I'm gonna have a little look and give you some commentary. I don't know what they've put in here. Let's see. Cooking has gotta be a laugh. It's gotta be simple, it's gotta be tasty, it's gotta be fun. Damn. 23. I suppose you could say it's stripping down the recipe to its bare essentials. No way, it's not me for food. I had to do that because obviously The Naked Chef was a very um, a provocative title. So I'll tell you a little story about The Naked Chef. So I got seen on the background of a documentary that I wasn't even supposed to be on. And I didn't even know I was on it because I was working the night it went on TV. The phone started ringing the next day at work. And everyone's going like, you were on the TV last night, you were on the TV. I was like, it was great, it was great. And the phone started ringing. The first person that phoned um, was someone from the BBC. And um, said, hello, um, I saw you on the TV last night. Um, we would like to do a TV show for you. And then started to laugh. And it was actually my general manager internally phoning, like taking the mickey. So obviously we had a few choice words. And then I cracked on with the service. And then in the middle of service, the phone rang again, twice. One was Optimum TV. One was Thames Television Granada, something like that. Because I thought it was my mate, this poor researcher that phoned me up from the TV production company, I told him to do terrible things to himself. Honestly, I really did. I told him to and I made it rhyme. And then I realized, because he said, oh, I'm ever so sorry. I, I just wanted to like, you know, maybe we could shoot a pilot and like that could get commissioned. And I knew then that I got something really wrong. I'm like, the word commission and pilot, my friend wouldn't have had that knowledge of that word. I'd written like what I wanted to do on TV and it was all about stripping restaurant food down to its bare essentials, stripping bare, Naked Chef. The working title originally, before I wrote that, was Forking Gorgeous. Thank God we didn't go with that. Ah, oh, those spiral staircases. So, spiral staircase, right? I was the only one that had a technique of sliding down there like, like 20 miles an hour. And it was about, it was like triple height. So I used to have these parties, everyone used to come around and they all used to try and do the same, but they didn't know the hack. And the amount of times you had ambulances called because they'd fall backwards and like, you know, it's just necks and bones. And I'd say, don't do it, don't, I beg them not to do it. Nightmare, absolute nightmare. Look at me with my, <laughs> ooh, I've got a turtleneck top and my raincoat on. <laughs> oh man, they were the days. Look at the mullet. Damn. So that restaurant I went into was Gennaro's first sort of uniquely whole owned restaurant called Passioni. And I think he had it for like over 10 years and it was a real hot spot in town. It was a really quaint, beautiful, like family run trattoria restaurant, um, beautiful food. He wrote a book, Passioni. And if you haven't got Gennaro's Passioni book, it's a really beautiful, beautiful book. Oh, Gennaro, come on. Oh, How are you? oh my God, he's so young. I see you after a long time. It's nearly three weeks. Some of your hair. He still does that now. Really nice, you look. Yeah, of course. Okay. Take care. Ciao, bella. Ciao. 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 I, I just love it. Oh my goodness, Gennaro. Oh, he was so handsome. He still is handsome. He was such a good cook and uh, totally took me under his wing. He was my first boss in London and oh my God, it's just, uh, I haven't seen him like that for years. Such a good friend and still my best friend today. So I'm blessed, a beautiful long friendship, all from the basement of the Neil Street restaurant with Antonio Colicchio, making focaccia, making beautiful pasta dishes, risottos. Wow, lovely memories. Oh, getting a haircut. Don't remember this. It must be a special occasion, Jane, if you're having a haircut. <laughs> it's my birthday. God, I look like my nephew. Oh, Jesus. So I thought I'd have my mop look at those lips. Massive lips. See so you cooking for everyone. Yeah, yeah. That's before my face grew into my lips. 
I want to keep it simple. I've got, um, I'm going to roast Look at the sideburns. Slice it up. Posh kebabs, mate. It'll be pepper. <laughs> Sorry. Stop that again. Uh, what did I say? There are 40 of them, so... I want to keep it simple. I've got, um, I'm going to roast a big loin of pork, slice it up, <laughs> big salad, sauces, shoved in a pit of bread, posh kebabs, mate. It'll be pepper. <laughs> Now I'm going to keep it really simple, whole pork loin, couple of sauces stuffed in a pit of bread. Pucker. Oh my God. P I used to say pucker a lot, which is an old Anglo-Indian word, which means the real McCoy. There's a very famous comedian, um, Del Boy from Only Fools and Horses, used to say it, and I think I picked it up. I haven't said pucker for about 15 years, and you've had 15 in 15 seconds. One to go. Pucker. If you're enjoying this, then please click the like button and give us some love, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and remember to turn on that notification bell so you know what's happening. Now, back to the recipe. Look at that barnet, though. Damn. Thing is, if I, br if I brought that barnet back now, I'd look like a sad case. <laughs> There she is, waiting. Look at me with my hamper. I remember how heavy it was. God, look how young Jules is. Bloody hell. Ah. Look at me struggling with those bags. That ain't gonna be romantic. I don't even remember this. I look at myself. <laughs> I look at myself and I just think, God, I'm so tired. <laughs> I was so young and energetic. Oh, there's my mum. <laughs> ah, OK. So, like, those little sequences that you see where I'm travelling, um, sometimes in TV you could call that a transition. So we go from a recipe or a shopping scene to something else. We did a first programme that you've never seen and you never saw it because it was rubbish. So we messed it up, and that obviously upsets the budget, and then you have to re-budget, and then because everyone's vulnerable, they're open to new ideas. So, like, it's a massive lesson for always embrace your failures, right? But we had a real problem at the time, because um, we'd gone from film cameras that were beautiful, you know, um, 16 mils, 36 mils, um, uh, little cine films, um, to these digi-beaters, which were the worst, t the worst cameras on planet Earth. And you can, like, the, the quality is terrible, it's the wrong format, terrible but they were too big to carry around and do fast stuff and get on scooters and stuff. I and mean, we didn't have like the little camcorders that we have now. So we went back to the old fashioned cine film and that's where, so when you watch these little scenes, it's got that beautiful film quality from like the stuff you see of like old movies. And yeah, we used to, we used to do that to tell the story of getting from one place to another. Anyway. I'm gonna have a bacon sarnie for brekkie. So what I've done is I've got one of these grill Fair pans play. and they're quite cheap. Anyway, look, I've got this bread here. My voice is different. And, um, I get them to slice it on the machine, but do you know you go in there and you get a normal bread? I've got the same shirt on. The well, I do it the other way, and I say, can you put it through the, the long way? So what you get... <laughs> <laughs> look at that. You Still bad. a good tip. Have you got a big day today, then? I've got a huge day. Oh, voice bless. Really so that voice that you hear... So when we messed up the first programme uh, and we, we started again, that's when the show started to get the potential of being quite cool. So they started using music from my record collection. We had the cine film to get from one place to another. I was on the scooter. Um, and then instead of looking down the camera, which is what I did in the first programme you never saw, um, it wasn't working. I wasn't professional enough. I, I couldn't... It, it, it's quite hard to look down the camera if you're not... I was so naive and green and young and all of those things. So Pat Llewellyn was this incredible producer, exec producer that used to run Optimum TV she found the two fat ladies and she was a bit of a phenomena. So because we made the mistake, she was all over the show to fix it, to correct it. So that was her voice. And that, of course, that changed everything. So without even trying, instead of me presenting to you as I am now, I was looking off camera, talking to a person, having a conversation and I'd be cooking stuff and feeding her and I could kind of come up and just sort of like lean in, like try it, it's like delicious. And that, that kind of documentary feel completely changed the vibe of the show. And sadly, Pat's no longer with us. Um, but she was an absolute hero in, in TV. She, she got Gordon on TV um, for the first time. And he worked with Pat for the large majority of his career. So yeah, she's amazing. God bless you, uh, Pat. I love you. Do you always use white bread? No, I don't. Well, 
Yeah. I don't like brown bread. My mum always tries to get me on it, but I don't like it at all. <laughs> I'll be I'm coming back to eat this evening. Yeah, I'm going to cook um, a Thai green curry, which is pretty appropriate. Thai green curry. Because we're going to get a little bit bev dump tonight. That looks like a good right, bacon sandwich. And then um, I'll, I've got to go shopping and get stuck in, because I've got a lot to do. It's quite cringe watching myself, but um, it's like a different person. It's not really like watching me. It was a very exciting time. It was like, like I came from a little village in Essex, and I was in London, straight into work, straight into sort of 18, even 20 hour days. I was doing three shifts at the time, like working with Gennaro as a third shift. But I was so young and so enthusiastic, I couldn't care less. Um, so the whole, and then the Naked Chef was just part of that energy. So it was just, everything was just bloody exciting. Oh, bless. Hello, mate. Listen, I'll be right to do your windows in a bit, mate. Thanks very much. Anytime. <laughs> very nice. There was a window cleaner there that actually wasn't a window cleaner. Uh, that was uh, one of my friends uh, who's actually working with me to this day. Woo! <laughs> say, say hello, mate. I'll say. Uh, <laughs> so um, we did like to use real people at the real time, but sometimes we had to, you know put a few extras in there. Thank you very much, Richard. Richard, was uh, were you a researcher on that? Or? Yeah. Um, so Richard was a researcher uh, and has been with me ever since. How lucky am I? What next? Oh, good, here we go. God, I haven't heard this in years. <laughs> I haven't seen, I don't even think my kids have seen this. <laughs> That's actually, they gave us quite a lot of airtime for that track. Um, so I used to be in a band from like 11 to 23. Most of those guys I grew up with, so that kind of kept me out of trouble when I was a kid. So I'd be working in the kitchens or in the shed at the end of the garden, surrounded in egg boxes, just rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. But I think it was really good for us. I actually still speak to all of them now. Beautiful memories, haven't seen that in a long time, haven't heard that in a long time. We didn't have Spotify or anything like that, like you could just like upload stuff. I can even tell listening to that, that I was like too fast. <laughs> it should have been a bit slower and I was <laughs> get so excited, like my tempo would be off. Slow down. <laughs> so, no, it's good, good times. Music and food, what's not to love? Oh man. Ah, oh, Christmas in America. Dwayne, I haven't seen Dwayne in ever. Dwayne was one of my chefs in London and I'd started my first restaurant that actually probably people have forgotten about called Monty's. I did it for a couple of years and it was pretty cool. And he was one of my line cooks, lovely boy from New York and he obviously went back for Christmas. Uh, and that was the Naked Chef Christmas special. Feels like yesterday and I need to get in contact with Dwayne because I haven't spoken to him in a long time. Wow. Thanks, Carlos. Look at that sandwich. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Here's your Look at my face. I'm like, ah! It's like 10 meals in one. Who eats that? How can you eat that? I can't eat anymore, mate. I can't eat anymore. <laughs> Not... Have a wally. <laughs> it's, it's very emotional seeing that. Um, very nostalgic. Like, I kind of see my energy, but I kind of don't recognise that young boy. So a lot, a lot has changed in that time, 25 years. When I see that, it makes me feel very nostalgic, but it's obviously nothing without you guys. So thank you so much for all of your support over the years. So I hope you enjoyed those clips, and I will try and find some more for you, because there's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love Gennaro to see that. I'd love Jules to see that. So next time we do it, we'll get some of the others in on it. Enjoy. From me and from him, pucker. <laughs>